Welcome to Creeping It Real. I am Judah. Let's talk about the 1980s horror film, The Children. Let's get this trailer going for you, just so we're all on the same page. Here's to the bus driver, the best of them all. Here's to the bus driver, the bus driver. This logo. <laughs> Give me a second. Uh, I'm going to get rid of me here. Okay. When I first saw this logo, now that I'm re-looking at it, it somewhat screams um, Dark Crystal. But when I first saw it and it popped up on the screen, I thought it was so metal. I was like, this is the most metal logo I have ever seen. And it raised my expectations for this movie to a level that could never be matched. I mean, I definitely was expecting Ozzy to show up at some point and bite something's head off. But it, it really cracks me up. This this logo definitely screams that this movie is going to be something totally different than what it is. And, and, I mean, that's okay, because this movie isn't fantastic as it is. But let's get back to this trailer. What's up, Billy? I just found the school bus about 100 yards from the ghoul place. Motor's still running. No Fred, no kids. Is your brother home from school yet? Huh? Okay, I want to point something else out. This woman down here in the corner. There's some really creepy stuff that goes on in this. Uh, obviously, her and this uh, deputy have got a thing going on. They put up some roadblocks later on in the movie, and there's these two uh, hick brothers that the <laughs> sheriff deputizes to help take care of this roadblock. And this uh, this young woman comes to visit her her beau, and uh, she's wanting him to kiss her, and he's all like, no, I can't, I can't. I'm on duty. I can't do it. I'm on duty. And she's like, fine, I'm leaving. And she leaves, and these two grody middle-aged men are all like, Hey, if you ain't going to give it to her, I will. And I was just, oh my gosh. It was, I, I, ugh, I was so grossed out by this. Uh, very disturbing, very disturbing. Okay, back to the trailer. No, he isn't home yet. Cut it out. What's the matter with you, Paul? Stop it. I said this. Okay, here's another thing. This kind of makes me laugh. Um... Our family is not super touch or touchy feely, uh, meaning that we're not, we're not giving each other lots of hugs and kisses and stuff. Now, I I was hugging my dad. Uh, I had no problem, you know, showing my love to my dad by hugging him. But my siblings hugging was not like a huge thing when we grew up. And uh, I remember hanging out at a friend's house for a sleepover. And uh, that family, them hugging, the siblings hugging each other and giving each other kisses on the cheek. And me thinking that that was the weirdest thing ever. So this right here, where we got this little brother <laughs> like coming at this sister, trying to give her a hug and her being like, stop it, you freak. Get away from me. This, this is how, this is what my family was like. I love, I love how this little girl just looks freaking dead in the camera. Look at this. She's like, boom, right in the camera. <laughs> this is what I'm going to do to you if you ever let me hug you. <laughs> oh, gosh. Don't touch it. Oh. What the hell happened to him? Let's go. I want to get Dr. Google up here right now. Wait a minute, Bill. How the hell could that have happened to him? Oh, it's the children. Okay, this lady right here, she's pregnant. 
I don't know if I mentioned, but we're doing all spoilers in this movie. So this lady is pregnant and, um, Um, there's a scene where she's home alone. Well, they have a young child. He's up in bed, but she's essentially home alone. And you see her going through a liquor cabinet. And my first thought is, wow, this lady does not care about her baby at all. She's about to get, you know, get herself a big cup of something and drink it. But then it turns out, actually, the liquor was hiding something. And she was getting what was hidden out from behind. And I was like, oh, okay. That's good that she's not going to be drinking while she's pregnant. <laughs> it turns out she she was hiding cigarettes, okay? And she sits down in her living room and she lights one up and she's smoking it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, do these people not know that smoking is bad for your children? And I, I was like, in the 1980s, did they not know that that was bad for the babies? But then... She, le- she looks down at her stomach. She pats her stomach and she goes, sorry. And I'm like, what the frick? So she did know that this could damage her baby. And she gave no Fs whatsoever. She's like, I'm getting my smoke. I don't care if my kid gets brain damage. It was insane. I couldn't believe it. But <laughs> okay, let's go. Let's, let's just finish this trailer. <laughs> Now, that was not the original theatrical trailer. That was a trailer for the re-release of the Vinegar Syndrome's uh, Blu-ray. But I used that one. <laughs> I don't want to play the other one. They're both they're both good in their own right. Ouch, I got something in my eye. I mean, they both <laughs> they're both silly in their own right. Now, the synopsis is... <laughs> There's a small town. The movie starts off. Uh, the movie starts off with a scene that apparently was not part of the original script, but I think they went back uh, and, and filmed it later on, post production reshoots to make the story seem a little more cohesive. So there's this this plant, and there's these two guys working on it, and uh, they come down and. They're talking about how there's a, a pressure issue going on and they can't figure it out and they can't find anything wrong with it. And, th- and they're just discussing going back to the office and they're like, well, if we go back to the office, they're going to ask us if we found the issue and we didn't. And then they're just going to send us back out here again. And they're like, yeah, I don't want to waste any more time out here. And they're like, OK, that's instead of going back to the office, let's just go get a beer. So these guys totally just shirk the responsibility completely, and they just go get themselves a beer instead. Then we cut back to this, this uh, like it's supposed to be like a nuclear plant, and they show this piece, and there's a drip. So there, there's there's the the pressure problem right there. So this causes some kind of a uh, a nuclear fog or gas that's leaking, and it, it goes into this town. And you see this bus driver, he's happy, he's driving the kids around, the kids are all happy, they're singing in 99 bottles of beer on the wall, which they start off singing it, and they actually make it to the end. So I'm like, how long of a freaking drive is this, that they made it through a whole round of 99 bottles of beer on the wall? And then they start singing songs about how our bus driver is the bus driver, best bu- bus driver. And it's all just like very like you can tell that the bus driver likes the kids. The kids are good kids. Uh, that pregnant woman is uh, passes them in her Volkswagen Beetle. She zooms around. She waves to the kids and the bus driver. And she plunges into this yellow colored fog and drives through. And the bus driver's all a little concerned, like, what is this fog? I don't know, but I'm just going to drive through it anyway. So he drives the bus through. Here's where things get interesting. Um, side note, those of you who have watched in the past the episodes that I talk about this, 
I do not like slasher films. I like horror, but I'm not a fan of slasher. So if we're going to be picking horror apart into its subgenres, slashers are 100% my least favorite. I, I, they're not even in my favorite category at all. They're in my like avoid at all cost kind of a thing. Uh, and then the next two, which are kind of on the same level of, of dislike, would be animal horror. Now, there are some mm, that I'm okay with. Like, I legitimately have a real fear of sharks, so Jaws works for me. But things like Cujo, I, I'm not into it. There's some movie about a mountain lion that is wounded, is going around and hurting people. I, I don't care about that. Grizzly bear stuff. Nah, I'm just, I'm not into it. Uh, like Anaconda and uh, Lake Placid. There has to be something more to it for me, me to care uh, about animal horror. I, I just, it's not for me. And then the third would be what I call bad kid horror. I just don't care. So those three, I generally stay away from. Now, again, the animal horror one, I can be a little forgiving on certain things. Like if the alligator is just massive, then maybe. But if it's just like a real mountain lion or real bear just coming after you, then I, I just don't care. Uh, and here's the thing, even as I'm saying this, I can think of an animal horror movie that I actually liked, The Ghost and the Darkness. I actually liked that. The Children is obviously would fit in the category of the bad kids horror that I do not care about. But I decided to give it a go. I saw it mentioned in one of these, uh, I don't know, documentaries. I think it was In Search of Darkness Part 3. I'm totally making that up. I have no idea what it was. Ah, fine, I'll look it up for you since you guys are punks. I was right. It was called In Search of Darkness. They mentioned it in there. And some of the scenes that they showed, I was kind of like, eh, maybe I'll give this a try. Okay, so back to the bus driver going through the fog. Then later on, we have a sheriff. He had, as I am saying this, I just remembered, they introduced the sheriff. He's at this diner and this redheaded uh, waitress is like flirting with him. She's got her, you know, cleavage all out flirting with him. They were going to have a date later that night. And then uh, all hell breaks loose, and obviously the sheriff doesn't make it <laughs> to his date. And they later on in the movie, they show her standing outside of the diner, like at 10 o'clock when he was supposed to pick her up. And she has tears running down her face. <laughs> and she just wa she walks off the camera, never to be seen again. It's very funny. I mean, I guess they, <laughs> I guess they tied, tied that up. They didn't just leave it as a, uh, what's the sheriff doing looking for these kids? He's got a date tonight with that hot redhead, which I did not think she was hot, but she was a redhead. And I don't know. Well, I mean, I guess good for them for wanting to make sure that nobody was like worried about her. What about the date? The date? He's got a date. Who cares about the kids? So somebody calls, uh, the sheriff, he needs to go to this house to go check on somebody. And as he's driving, he passes a school bus that's just pulled off to the side of the road and by this uh, cemetery. And he's like, that's weird. He gets out. He checks it. All the kids' stuff are still in, in the bus. All the kids are gone. The bus driver is gone, except his hat is there. And this, this was a really weird thing for me. He walks in there and he's all like confused. He's picking up kids stuff. He's looking at, it. he's like, where are the kids? He goes to the bus driver's seat. He picks up the bus driver's hat. He looks at it and he just, he just smiles. And he's like, yeah, everything's okay. And sets the hat down and walks away back to where, wherever he was, he was going. <laughs> he gets to his destination. Some woman in a bikini chilling out. There's this dog barking. They have some words. He asks if their son came home yet. She's like, no. And 
Then there's just some weird, it would probably make sense if I rewatched it, but I don't know. There's some chick at a piano at this house wearing the Cher shirt. I, I, it made no sense to me. They were, I, they were just trying to bump the R rating and get some boobies in there. She's playing this piano in the <laughs> ear shirt, but they make it very obvious that she's got some mental issues. This woman that was in the bikini like hands her a bottle of meds and she's like, here, just take take a few of these and chill out. Just keep your keep playing the piano and don't worry about nothing. So bikini lady, she gets dressed. She goes with the cop. They go to go look at the uh, the bus, and she's like, yeah, I don't know either. This woman is uh, on the verge of being a Karen the whole time. In some sense, I have no problem because this sheriff was just so nonchalant about these missing children. It was unbelievable. <laughs> so at this point, the sheriff finally makes some kind of report. Hey, we got the bus. The kids are missing. Anybody know what's going on? So he asks this woman, do you want me to drive back home? She's like, no, I'll just walk there. Sheriff takes off. She starts seeing some movement off in the, uh, <laughs> in the graveyard. It's a child. She runs up there to see what's going on. She's calling Billy, Billy. If that, I don't, I don't know what the kid's name was. I don't know. And uh, as she's running through the graveyard, she trips over something. She turns around and it's the bus driver, Sans hat. And he's all burnt crispy radiation burns all over his body and she's freaking out oh my gosh she's like touching his icky skin it made no sense to me i would not touch that and then billy pops out from behind one of the tombstones and she's like oh billy and she gives him a big hug and he puts his arms around her and you see his fingernails are all black he's all emo black fingernails and he hugs her and then you hear and then this this yellow steam starts coming off of her and she gets radiation burns and she dies. I personally am not a big fan of kids and it doesn't take much to keep me away from them just because I'm not a big fan. You don't have to give them radiation powers to keep me away. I'm just, I'm just saying. So now you've got these radioactive kids running around the town, hugging people and killing them. There's a big problem there. So they're, they're almost acting kind of like zombies in a way. They're not unintelligent, but they're just kind of walking around. And now for some reason, they're all effed up in the head and they, they just want to hug people and kill them. It, it, made, it made no sense. Apparently, this is what toxic waste does to you, particularly radiation toxic waste. That'll it'll either turn you into the toxic Avenger or make you want to hug people and kill them. I, it's a 50, 50. Some of you might take that risk. I'm just, I'm just going to avoid it at all costs. We're like 45 minutes into the movie and still nobody understands that the children are now, I don't know, zombies and killing people. Then finally they figure it out. Bullets do nothing to the children. They get shot and they get right back up. I mean, literally nothing is stopping them. Some people didn't like the idea of shooting the children. Understandably. So the sheriff is in the pregnant woman's house. They're missing their daughter. Okay. The sheriff is aiming out the window and shooting these kids. This woman does not, at this point, she does not know that the kids are burning people to death. And she's like, what are you doing? Stop shooting the kids. You know, she bops him over the head and, you know, he's just like, Duh. he's out on the ground. And the husband comes in. What did you do? He's shooting the kids. <laughs> and he's like, the, the husband's hand is all burnt and crispy. And he's like, who do you think did this to my hand? It's the kids. So the sheriff, <laughs> the sheriff is knocked out on the ground. The husband takes the sheriff's gun. The wife is hysterical running throughout the house. <laughs> the husband's following after her. The zombie kid climbs up the side of the house and he's at the window knocking. And the little kid lets him in. He's like, hey, Billy, let's play hide and seek. So zombie boy is in the house. He comes down the steps. He starts coming towards a pregnant woman all like, give me a hug. Give me a hug. She's freaking out, screaming, backing up, you know, not doing anything that's actually going to help her. And then the cop regains consciousness and he's like, where's my gun? His gun is gone because the husband has it. Lucky enough, they happen to have a katana. <laughs> displayed on their wall so this cop grabs the katana and he comes out 
And he, he did what any other person would do. He chops this kid's hands right off. There you go. There you go. <laughs> See the black fingernails. That's how you know. That's how you know. <laughs> so he cuts his kid's finger, his hands right off. And wouldn't you know it, that is where their power lies in their black fingernail hands. He cuts them off. And immediately this child dies. Hallelujah. Now we know how to kill these kids. The husband and this cop, now armed with his trusty katana, decide that it's time to go and hunt down the rest of the children and put an end to this silliness. So they leave the house. The husband grabs an ax. They're on the hunt. They find the kids. And this is where it's kind of disturbing. Uh, they corner them in a barn, and then the sheriff just goes at them with an axe. Now, they cut away, and you don't see any gore. In fact, there, I don't think there's blood. Well, when the people get burnt, crispy, um, the scabby type stuff is kind of bloody. But th there isn't a lot of squirty blood, splatters, any, anything like that. So he, it, it is a little disturbing to see him go after these group of cowering kids in the corner with uh, a, a hatchet, it, but then it cuts away. Everything's, everything's okay. They defeated the evil children. The cop goes back to his car. He's calling people to let them know we got the situation taken care of. For those other cities out there who might be facing the same issue, this is how you got to get rid of them. You got to cut their hands off. It's just the only logical thing. I don't know why we didn't think about it from the beginning. As he's talking, a child pops up in the back of his car. Ah, oh, how did they survive? Well, I'm going to tell you, when they, they thought they killed her, but all they did was cut off one of her hands, so she was able to revive through the one hand, and she killed the cop. She put her one grubby hand on him and killed him. He got all crispy. Then the husband runs out, sees the crispy sheriff, and he grabs the katana and he finishes off that little girl, cuts off her last hand. At least that's what I assumed. Again, they didn't show anything. Then you start seeing, hearing screaming from the house. Husband runs in. There's probably one last kid left. Nope, his wife is having a baby. So they deliver the baby. The moral of the story is life goes on. Or does it? I'm not going to spoil the ending for you. You're just going to have to watch and figure it out yourself. As they're having the baby, they do cut scenes back to some of the carnage that had occurred throughout this movie. Definitely to kind of give you this feeling like, yes, this horrible stuff happened. Uh, there's all this death, but life goes on. Because then they also showed sunrises. They showed, you know, birds. You hear the, the birth of the child. So you're like, yeah, it's horrible, but life goes on. At this point, when they're showing the kids that got axed and katana <laughs> they, they didn't just cut off their hands they're like in freaking pieces laying all over the place they did not just stop at the hands they chopped them all up it was crazy it was it was crazy was this movie good no this movie was not good but as i'm re-talking to you about it i'm cracking up like i had a great time and i didn't have a great time it was it was not a great movie. I'm not sure who I would recommend this to other than just horror fans. And I'm that, you know, if I get in a conversation and we're just like naming off all these movies we've seen and we're trying to up the other person, and be like, oh, have you seen this one? Oh, yeah, well, have you seen this one? That's the only reason I'd be like, oh, the children, you need to see the children. I want to read to you some of the critical. Where is it? Here, <laughs> critical response to this movie. Good, good grief. <laughs> Upon the theatrical release in 1980, I'm getting this from Wikipedia, by the way, the children received general negative reviews. The Los Angeles Times called it a despicable movie that reeks of nasty, ill-defined dislike for humankind. I didn't pick up on that. The Orlando Sentinel deemed the actors, this is, this is so insane, 
the actors the ugliest bunch of folks we've seen assembled on any, any screen at any one time. Holy smokes! I, I, I didn't think that. They just seemed like normal people. Wow. I must be idiot. Well, I mean, I don't really have a high view. <laughs> uh, I give this movie a five out of ten. I do the same for myself. I give myself a five out of ten. <laughs> the Pittsburgh Post Gazette criticizes the writing, directing, acting, and the special effects. The latter slammed for burned bodies looking exactly like leftover pepperoni pizza, <laughs> complete with black olives and anchovies. <sighs> They're not wrong. <laughs> I can't. I can't defend it. They're not wrong. They're not wrong. <laughs> also, according to Wikipedia, I don't know what the budget was for this thing, but it says that it made seven million. <laughs> hey, it says seven million or two million. There's a, that's a big discrepancy. Eh, whatever. <laughs> okay. There, there's also there's a couple scenes in this movie that make no sense to me whatsoever. Okay, so there's this woman right here. That's a, a mom of one of the children. She's sunbathing next to her pool. She's topless. Her husband is next to her super ripped dude, just like lifting weights in his uh, whitey tighties. And the cop walks up, sees that she's topless, has no problem whatsoever. Again, they're just trying to, you know, bump the R rating. You know, got to get them boobies in there. He he does not care whatsoever that she's topless. And she takes her sweet time covering up. She's just like, oh, this guy is inconveniencing me. I guess I'll cover up. But she takes so long to do it. It's almost at that point, I'm like, what? It, it's taking you so long. Why are you even? And the cop just doesn't care. Uh, he uses the excuse that the children are missing to, you know, stand there and oogle her. So that, that scene was really odd to me. But there's also, they, they put up this roadblock. And some guy comes in in this, he, it's like a, not a limousine, but he's got a chauffeur. Okay, this is just the chauffeur right here. But in the back, can you see back here? There's a guy back there. He's being inconvenienced by this roadblock, and he's pretty pissed off. And he rolls down his window, and he says to the cop, do you know who I am? And the cop's like, no, I don't. And he's like, well, I know so-and-so. can't remember her name. And he's like, do you know so-and-so? And, and the deputy is like, yes, I don't. Okay, here we go. So here's the, here's the guy in the back seat. He's like, do you know her? And he's like, yeah, I do. And he's like, well, I'm a personal guest of her, and she's not going to be happy that you're keeping me here. And he's like, why don't you call her up and ask her? And the deputy's like, I don't have her phone number. And this dude's like, here, use my phone. This is 1980. Did they have car phones in the 1980s? So he pulls up. He just pulls out of his car this phone. Actually, I'm going to look this up. It says right here. In the 1980s, the car phone was more popular than the mobile phone. However, as mobile phones became lighter and more affordable during the mobile phone boom in the 1990s, the car phone became less common. Okay, well, there you go. Color me enlightened. So this dude hands him the phone. But in between every, every like uh, interaction <laughs> with the deputy, he rolls up his window and leans back in his chair. And you're just like, okay, what's going on? And then he'll lean back up again, roll down the window, say a few things, roll up the window, and then lean back. It was, it, it, I'm not going to lie. The goofiness and pointlessness of it did make me giggle. Anyway, the deputy calls this woman. He's like, do you know him? And she's like, yeah, you need to send him in here. Stop inconveniencing my guests. So they open up the roadblock, and he drives in. This character never shows up again in the movie. I have no idea what the point of this, <laughs> this character was other than to give more minutes to the movie 
so they could be the theatrical release length. But when I was snooping around in IMDb, okay, you see this? It says Martin Brennan. It says Martin Brennan was reportedly a drug dealer who sold cocaine to the cast and crew during the making of the movie. Who the heck is Martin Brennan? Let's find out, shall we? Look, it's the guy in the back of the car on his car phone. Yes, Martin Brennan. Now everything is clear. Why was this guy in the movie? Why was this character part of it? Because he was the drug dealer dealing to the cast and crew. It makes so much sense now. Uh, this movie is not a gem. This is not something you need to see. I, like I already said, I give it a five out of 10. Um, if you are a horror fan, I would watch it though. It's, it's, I mean, there was some moments that made me laugh. The acting is not great. There's some really silly moments in this. The practical effects, like that one critic said, leftover pepperoni pizzas with black olives. There you have it. This is the children. I am Judah. You've been watching Creeping It Real. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. And if you've seen this movie, I would love to know what your thoughts were. If you, <laughs> if I really, I want to know what your thoughts are. And if you have any suggestions for a movie that I should check out, you think maybe I haven't seen, or even that I have seen and that I need to rewatch and talk about so that we can have a conversation, let me know. I'd love it. Talk to you later.